Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to present the solution of the Power Query Challenge regarding the running total. Let's start by reminding ourselves what was the challenge. We have a table on the left hand side containing only two columns. First column for the date, it covers almost three months starting the 1st of Jan up to 31st of March. And also we have a column for the amounts. The only requirement is to add two columns to this table. First one containing the running total. We need another column containing the running total for month, meaning that the running total is being reset at the beginning of each month. So we have a separate running total for January, separate running total for February, and separate running total for March. Actually, I was ready with one solution for this challenge using the table that select rows. However, I received a good amount of creative solutions from you. Thank you very much for each and every one shared his solution with me. Some of these solution was depending on the list dot first n, and it is a very famous solution, and some of you used it. Some other used the custom function. However, I received one brilliant solution using the custom function from my friend Hisham Bentama from Algeria. Accordingly, I decided to start the first part of the solution, which is actually for the running total using the list with first n. The second part will be using the table with select rows. And at the end, I'm going to present the full solution, the very creative one presented by Hisham Bentama or shared by Hisham Bentama using the custom functions. As I'm presenting more than one solution, the video will be a little bit long. Also, if you shared with me your solution, please wait till the end of the video. You will hear your name and you will see it on the wall of the fame. Let's go directly and see the first part using list.firstn. I already loaded the table to the Power Query. I gave the query name running total. I have only two steps, the source and then the change type. What is exactly the running total? The running total is basically the accumulation of the rows, meaning that if these dates are sorted, actually I give you sorted dates, but you need to make sure that it is definitely sorted. So I'm going to start by sorting the date column. I'm going to use the filter arrow and then sort ascending and by adding this sorting step i am dead sure that anytime i receive this table it will be sorted by date back to the idea of the running total it is the accumulation of the rows so in the first row i need only the total of the first row the second row i need the summation of the first and second row the third row will contain third second and first and so on and so forth so at the beginning i need something to tell me exactly or to tell the power query where we are exactly where is our position at every line we are doing a calculation meaning that i need something like a serial number starting from one in the first row and then two in the second row and so on and so forth until the end of the table at 21. i can do this using the power query interface using the add column tab i have something called index column so i can just click on this small arrow and i can select from one meaning that my index column or my serial number will start from one not from zero once i click on it i will have the index column added starting from one up to 21. now we need to add another column in this empty area adding the first row in the first row adding the first two rows in the second row adding the first three rows in the third row and so on and so forth in order to do this i'm going to add a custom column again from the add column ribbon i'm going to the custom column button let me give this a name rt or running total i'm going to start by just referencing the previous step when i reference here the previous step it will create a table inside each and every line of this column i will have the entire big table inside each and every row of this column if you look at the added index step it has a space between the two words so i need to reference it by using the hash pound then open a quotation and then i'm going to write added index once i click on ok you will see that i have a new column and i have table in each and every row and if you check this table it is nothing but the entire table itself or the big table itself no need for the entire table for me i need only to add the amount column so i'm going to reference the amount column and once i do so it will be converted to a list and let's try together i'm going back to the same step 
and here I'm going to add the field axis operator which is basically the square bracket and I'm going to write amount and then close the square bracket and hit OK and here you go now your table turned into a list and each and every list contains all amounts coming from the original table now I need to tell Power Query in the first row of the bigger table I need only the first amount in the second line I need the first and second in the third line I need the first three lines and so on and so forth in order to do so I can use a function called list.firstn and I'm going to use the index column in order to tell this function that in the first line I need only one item in the second line I need two items in the third line I need three items and so on and so forth let's go back to our custom column just after the equal sign I'm going to add my function list dot first n space and open a bracket the first requirement is a list and I have the list here which is basically the column amount of the table added index and the table added index is the output of the step added index that I'm already referencing here then comma the second requirement is basically account or condition and here I can use the index column to tell this function at the first row please use one second row use two third row use three and so on and so forth so I can go to the available columns here and just double click on the index and then close the bracket and click on OK now let's check the new list at the first row you can see only one amount second row you can see two amounts third row three amounts and so on and so forth now the task is becoming easy I can just go and sum this list using a very basic function called list.sum let's go back to our added custom just after the equal sign I'm going to use list.sum nothing required but the list to be summed so I'm going to open a bracket and close it at the end and then OK and here you go you have the running total working perfectly now you need to change the data type I can just do it here I can just uh, say decimal number however I can use the formula bar if you look at the table add column function it has a fourth argument I can go just before the last bracket and then add a comma and then I can define the data type but just typing type and then space and then number and number is nothing but the decimal number and then hit the check mark and if you check again you have the type check changed and your column for the running total is just ready now we need to calculate the monthly running total and I'm going to use a function called table.selectRows and this is the same function that created automatically when you try to filter any column inside Power Query just a quick reminder the monthly running total is being reset at the beginning of each month meaning that I need something inside my table to indicate the month when I'm selecting the date column and from date and time I can just select the date and I can see something called month and from there I can select something to indicate the month and I'm going to select the start of the month so now I have a column called start of the month and it is changing at the beginning of each and every month now I need to add another column containing the monthly running total so I'm going to add column and then custom column again I'm going to start by just referencing the entire table inside each and every cell of the new column I'm going to leave the name as custom I'm going to reference the step inserted start of month and you can see it contains some spaces so I need to start by the hash and double quotes and inside the double quotes I'm going to carefully write inserted start of the month once I click on OK I will have a new column and if you check inside each and every cell I have a table containing the entire big table that I have now I need to start to filter this table using the table dot select rows function so let me go back to the added custom one and then I'm going to use the function table.selectRows this function requires a table and already I have the table here coming from the inserted start of month and then comma to add the second parameter and it is basically a condition the condition as we mentioned we need to tell this query please for each and every date of the big table select the rows that has dates less than or equal to this date so I'm going to reference columns from both tables 
Now, if I want to reference a column from this table, I have all the available columns here. That is no problem. But how can I reference a column from the inner table? In order to do so, I have to declare a variable. The variable will represent the inner table, and then I can use any column from the inside table or the inner table. So in order to declare a variable, I'm going to open a bracket, and then I'm going to give any variable name. Let me call it IT for inner table. Then I'm going to close the bracket. And after closing the bracket, I have to use the equal sign and then greater than symbol. Both together are representing the goes to operator. Accordingly, as this variable is representing the inner table, I'm going to take a column from the inside table. So I'm going to write IT and then open a square bracket. And then I'm going to select the date column. And this is exactly the date column of the inner table. I need this date to be less than or equal to the column date from the outside table. And I have here all the columns from the outside table. So I can just double click on the date and then close the bracket and then hit OK. And let's see what will happen. If you check your table now, in the first row, you have a table containing only one row. In the second row, you have a table containing two rows and so on and so forth. But if you go the last row, the 21st row, you can see that I have all the rows of the entire table. And this is not exactly what I want. I need now to use the column start of month in order to make sure that my rank total will be reset at the beginning of each month. So let me go back to our added custom one step and I'm going to add another condition. Let me do some formatting for this function first. After the first condition, I'm going to add the AND operator in order to add another condition. And again, I'm going to use the date column from the inner table in order to compare it with the start of the month column from the outside table. So I need each and every date from the inside table to be greater than or equal to the start of the month column from outside table. So I can just select from the available columns and double click and let's see what will happen. Check now the tables from the inside column. If you check the last day of Jan, you have all rows for Jan. If you check the first day of February, it's now starting over. If you check the last day of February, it contains all rows for February. If you check the first day of March, it is resetting again and starting from the beginning. I think now it's working perfectly. We are so close to finish this solution. Let me go back to the added custom one. No need for the entire table. I need only the amount column. So at the end, I'm going to open a square bracket and type amount and then close the square bracket. And at the beginning, I can use the list.sum function again. So let me type list.sum. And also I did some quick formatting in order to have this code much readable and then click on OK. And let's see what will happen. I have here my rank total. It's now resetting at end of each month. If you try to check the end of January, it has 11,000. At the start of February, it's starting from the beginning. And then at end of February, I have 12,000. And then it starts over again at the beginning of March. Now I think it's working perfect. Now I need also to change the data type. I can go to the formula bar. I'm going to the last parameter the fourth parameter of the add column function and then comma type number. Also, I can change the name of the column from here. And instead of custom, let me call it MRT or monthly running total and then the check mark. Now I have the type change and also the correct name of the column. Let me select the columns that I'm going to use. I'm going to select date and then I'm going to push and hold control, then amount running total and finally, monthly running total, right click, remove other columns, and then home, close and load, close and load to existing worksheet. And let's put it in column H and click on OK. And here you go. You have your table containing running total and monthly running total. Now I'm going to present the solution shared by my friend Hisham bin Tama from Algeria, and this is depending on the custom functions. I already reloaded a new table, a new version of the table to the Power Query. I have a name of RT, and then I have only one applied step, which is basically the source. And I'm going to start by just sorting the date column, sort ascending, and I'm going to stop here. 
and I'm going to reference this query to have a new version referencing the original version right click and then reference and here you go you have another version of the query it has only one step which is source let me change this to rtf and f is for function I'm going to do the same as we did at the beginning I'm going to add the index column so from add column I'm going to index column and then from one I have here the new index the index column and also I'm going to add another custom column to calculate the running total I'm going to use exactly the same code that we used at the first part of this video so again to add column custom column and from the custom column window let me call it RT and just after the equal I'm going to write the exact same code now I have the same two functions list.sum and list.firstn let me just hit ok and here you go you have a new column containing the running total I can go from formula bar and change the type using the fourth argument of the table.add column function comma and then type and number and then the check mark and all sorted now I need to change this query into a function let me go to view and then advanced editor I'm going to add a line before let I need to declare a variable so I'm going to open a bracket I need this variable to contain a table so I'm going to call it my table and I'm going to type as table because this will always contain a table after the close bracket I need to use equal and then greater than both together are the goes to operator and then I need to do some change in this code I'm going to delete the source step because no source required for the function and also inside the table.add index column I need to change source to my table this is our variable so anytime we give a table to this function it will perform these two steps adding index and then calculating the running total let me click on done all data will disappear and you have a place to input your parameter for this function but I'm going back to the original query RT and I'm going to invoke this function inside this query this time I'm going to start by the monthly running total once again I need something to indicate the month so I'm going to add column date and then from month I'm going to select start of the month and now I need to group this table group by will summarize this table into only three rows if I used the start month in order to group this table so let me just right click and use group by it will group by the start of the month no problem let me change name of the column to all rows and then for operation I'm going to use all rows what this means this means that each and every row of the three rows that I'm going to have for each and every month it will contain a smaller group of the original table belongs to each and every row from the start of the month column let's try together I'm going to hit ok and let's check I have one row representing January if you go inside this table you will see all rows for the month of January if you check the second one I have one line for February and here I have all the rows for February and the same for March now I have three tables each and every table representing a month so I can just apply the function or invoke the function for each and every separate table and this will give me the running total for each and every month separately in order to do so I'm going to add another custom column so from add column custom column no need to change the name of the column and here I'm going to invoke the custom function RTF then I'm going to open a bracket and I need all rows this will tell the function please go for each and every row of the column all rows and calculate the running total once I click on ok let's check what will happen I'm going to have a new table for each and every cell this new table containing the index and also the running total I can just delete the other columns I'm going to select custom right click and remove other columns and I can expand this custom column please don't forget to uncheck use original column name as prefix also no need for the index and no need for the start of the month I can just uncheck both this column and click on ok and here you go I have the date the amount and the running total 
actually this is not the running total it is the monthly running total so i can go inside the formula bar the first step of the column names is for the original column and the second set of names is for the new columns so i can just change this to mrt or monthly running total and then the check mark and now i think i'm good to go for the monthly running total let's now add the new column for the running total in order to do so i have an entire table i can just invoke the function for this entire table in order to do so i'm going to add a new step using the fx button once i click on it it will add a custom step and also it will reference the previous step which contains a table i can just invoke the function here rtf open a bracket and then close the bracket and end and then hit the check mark and here you go you have two new columns one containing the index for the entire table and the second one containing the running total i think now i'm good to go let me change the name of this step to rt and the name of this step to mrt and then hit enter now i can select only the rows required for my report i'm going to select date and then push and hold control amount and then i can start with rt and then mrt this will also give me the right order for the columns right click and remove other columns i can select the entire table and from transform detect data types i can change this to date only not date and time and i think now i am good to go home close and load close and load to existing worksheet and i can select m and click on ok and thank you very much hisham for this brilliant solution he created a function and he used this function twice once for the small tables to create the monthly running total and once again for the entire table to create the running total for the whole table my favorite part of the video the wall of fame i would like to thank each and every one contributed with his solution but at the beginning i'm going to mention two stars for this video first one will be salma halal the first female to contribute thank you very much salma the second will be for sure hisham bin tama the one who shared the custom function solution with us thank you very much hisham mustafa el hawari Ashraf Hawash, Osman Abu Ziyad, Haytham Al Tahan, Kevin Ku, Sharad Gupta, Anthony Sovi, Elias Fayad, Ihab Ammar, Noa Oren, Ibrahim Uzadid, Ziyad Sharaf Shamsan, Muhammad Al Ziki, Mahmoud Hassan Khalaf, Omar Afakir, Fathi Taha, Ahmed Al Shanawani, Shihab Al Saghir, Mahmoud Mansour, Mr. Samir Tubil. I hope I managed to pronounce all the names correctly. That was all for today. Thank you very much for your time. If you like this video, please like it, leave me a comment and subscribe. And you will find some useful links here. Please check them out and see you in next challenge. And bye.